This formula for pi was first discovered by the English mathematician John Wallace in the year 1655. So it was discovered by John Wallace. And this result comes from the sine function. So if I make a little bit of space here, so the sine function can be written as an infinitely long polynomial if you know its Taylor series. And the Taylor series of the sine function is x minus x to the third power over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial, and this pattern continues. The next term would be x to the ninth over 9 factorial, and remember, a factorial, for instance, 4 factorial, is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And it's important to see this as an infinitely long polynomial because we can rewrite this function in terms of its roots. In other words, in terms of which values of x that make this function equal to 0. And recall that the sine function is equal to 0 when x is 0 plus or minus pi plus or minus 2 pi plus or minus 3 pi and so on. There are an infinite amount of values for which the sine function is equal to 0. So we can rewrite the function in terms of these zeros here by saying that the sine function is equal to x minus the first root which is 0 multiplied by x minus the second root, which is positive pi, multiplied by x minus negative pi, which is plus pi, multiplied by x minus 2 pi, multiplied by x minus negative 2 pi, or x plus 2 pi, and so forth. The next term would be x minus 3 pi, and then we'd multiply that by x plus 3 pi and we can clean this result up a little bit. So this term here is just going to be x, so I'll first divide each side by x. So we're left with the sine of x divided by x is equal to, so now we have x minus pi times x plus pi, which we can simplify to x squared minus pi squared. Since if we multiplied these together using the FOIL method, we'd have x times x plus pi times x minus pi times x so the middle terms will cancel and then minus pi times pi gives you minus pi squared and we can apply this to every one of these pairs of plus or minus pi plus or minus 2 pi and so on so the next term here would be x squared minus 4 pi squared because again, when we multiply these together, the middle terms will cancel out. So we're just left with the first ones multiplied together, which is x squared, and the last ones multiplied together, which is minus 4 pi squared. So the next term will be x squared minus 9 pi squared, multiplied by x squared, x squared minus 16 pi squared, and this continues forever. It is infinitely long. So our next step is to factor this, the sine x over x, into a slightly different form. So if I move down a little bit, I'd like to rewrite the sine x over x in a different way. So it's true that this is also equal to some constant a, which I'll come back to, multiplied by 1 minus x squared divided by pi squared and this is multiplied by 1 minus x squared divided by 4 pi squared multiplied by 1 minus x squared over 9 pi squared multiplied by 1 minus x squared divided by 16 pi squared and this goes on forever and a simple way for you to verify that this is indeed true is that if I start with this term here I can show how to transform it into this term. So the x squared minus pi squared, if 
I decide to factor out a minus pi squared, I'd be left with minus pi squared multiplied by x squared divided by minus pi squared plus 1. And you can see that this is obviously true because we can redistribute this minus pi squared and end up with our original result. So another way I can rewrite this is equal to minus pi squared multiplied by 1 minus x squared over pi squared. So essentially I've applied this general idea to every single one of these terms to transform them into these terms. And this constant a out front deals with everything that we had to factor out from these polynomials. So to determine the value of a, we would need to set x equal to 0. So x is 0. So the right hand side will just be a times, well if I put x equal to 0 into all of these places here, all of these terms here are eliminated. They're equal to 0. So I'm left with just 1 from each of these terms and they're all multiplied together. So we have a multiplied by an infinite amount of 1's. And on the left hand side, the sine x over x, I would have to take the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x and it's a well-known result from basic calculus that this limit is equal to 1. You could also apply L'Hopital's rule and take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom so that you'd end up with the limit as x approaches 0 of the cosine of x over 1 and the cosine of 0 is just 1 so this equals 1. So the left hand side is equal to 1 and the right hand side is just a multiplied by an infinite amount of 1's so we can conclude that a is simply equal to 1. So now I'll quickly rewrite this sine x over x in some more free space. So now that I have the function rewritten all I have to do now is evaluate this sine x over x when x is equal to pi divided by 2. So the sine of pi over 2 is just equal to, to 1. So we have 1 divided by pi over 2. And this is equal to this infinite product here. But now everywhere there's an x value, I'm replacing it with pi over 2. So notice that all of these x values are squared. So we want to look at pi over 2 squared pi over 2 squared is just pi squared divided by 4. So if I plug this value in anywhere there's an x squared I'll end up with 1 minus pi squared and I'll put the 4 in the denominator so this is divided by 4 times pi squared and this is all multiplied by 1 minus pi squared and again I'll put the 4 in the denominator so this is 4 times 4 pi squared multiplied by 1 minus pi squared divided by 4 times 9 pi squared multiplied by 1 minus pi squared over 4 times 16 pi squared and this goes on and on and right away we can notice that in each of these fractions here, each of these fractions, I have a pi squared in the numerator and a pi squared in the denominator. So I can cancel these out. And now if I rewrite this as 2 divided by pi, so this 2 over pi is equal to 1 minus 1 fourth multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 4 times 4, which is 16 multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 4 times 9 which is 36 multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 4 times 16 which is 64 and I'll do one more and the next term would be 1 minus 1 over 4 times 25 which is 100 and this goes on forever so now we just have to evaluate these fractions so I have that 2 over pi is equal to we have 
4 over 4 minus 1 fourth multiplied by 16 over 16 minus 1 16th multiplied by 36 over 36 minus 1 36 and so on so I can rewrite this now as 2 over pi is equal to 4 fourths minus 1 fourth just leaves with 3 fourths multiplied by 16 over 16 minus 1 16th leaves me with 15 over 16 multiplied by 35 over 36 multiplied now we're looking at 1 minus 1 64th would just be 63 over 64 multiplied by 99 over 100 notice in this pattern that the numerator is always one less than our denominator so the last bit of algebra that we have to do is to take the reciprocal of each side of this so we have pi over 2 and since this is a product we can just flip all of these numbers we have 4 over 3 times 16 over 15 times 36 over 35 and so on now we can write it in its final form that pi over 2 is equal to 2 times 2 divided by 1 times 3 multiplied by 16 is just 4 times 4 15 is just 3 times 5 multiplied by 36 which is 6 times 6 divided by 35 which is just 5 times 7 and we can continue this the next would be 8 times 8 divided by 7 times 9 then we have 10 times 10 divided by 9 times 11 and this goes on forever and one final way to look at this is by noticing that pi over 2 is equal to the product of all the squares of the even numbers divided by the product of all the squares of the odd numbers